Now at 9, four staters cheer on the Chiefs as they play in Super Bowl 58. We'll visit some watch parties in the area. Plus, Pittsburgh residents warm up before the big game with the Chiefs group run. And... Is the Taylor Swift effect extending to this year's Super Bowl ads? I'm Brian Yenis in New York with how her impact is influencing advertisers' game plan coming up. The four states' most watched news starts now. This is KOM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. An Oklahoma woman is dead after a late night crash in Joplin. It happened around 11 p.m. Friday night on I-44 near Exit 4. Authorities say a 24-year-old Rachel Binford was taking the exit when she hit the rear of a tractor trailer, also taking the exit and left the roadway. Binford was killed in the crash. No one in the semi was injured. And the JPD major crash team is investigating the crash. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us for a first look at weather. We do have some pretty intense winter weather system coming in tonight. Right now, we're not seeing much, maybe some rain starting to make its way into our area. And in fact, we do have a winter storm warning for our southeastern counties and a winter weather advisory that is expanded to our central eastern counties. The winter storm warning and the winter weather advisories both staying in effect until Monday at 6 p.m. The winter storm warning is going to be due to all of the uh, hazardous driving conditions, the heavy bands of snow falling through that area, getting upwards of four to six inches. And it could be uh, some other things that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now we see some rain and snow start to make its way into our area, but so far nothing serious yet. And I'll bring more details in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, football fans across the four states gather together to watch the Super Bowl today. KOM's Samantha Walker met with fans before the big game to see how they were celebrating. Super Bowl 58 between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers is bringing out fans from across the four states. Many chose to gather at watch parties at local bars and restaurants to celebrate. Oh, we got plenty of food. We got some drink specials going on. We got one, two, seven TVs and our big TV that we're going to show the entire game. He says past Super Bowl games have proven how fun gatherings of fans can be. We've always had a great time, been a great turnout, and, you know, We've seen two Chiefs Super Bowl wins here. So. And fans from both teams came out to represent. Well, obviously the Niners, you know, bang, bang, Niner gang, got to represent. Well, there's no doubt. Obviously the Chiefs, and uh, I've been with them through the thick and thin, and uh, I've been rooting for them since I moved back from Texas in uh, fifth grade. And for some fans, watching the game could bring some family tension, especially when a couple has different teams. We wanted to come out and not have a family feud because we're, we're both one family, one fan each family. Fans say watch parties offer an opportunity to be around people with the same interests. Oh, it's, a, it's enjoyable to hear other people's take on things when things are going good or bad. So uh, it's just, it's kind of fun being around other fans. And fans from both teams were hoping for a win. I'm just uh, got my fingers crossed for another another great win, another Super Bowl win. I'll be the happiest day of my life, probably. Except for when you married her. Except for when I married her, for sure. Reporting for KOAM, I'm Samantha Walker. Super Bowl 58 is still underway. The current score is tied 16-16. We'll have the highlights in sports. Well, Chiefs fans in Neosho started the Super Bowl party early with a tailgate yesterday. Local vendors and community members brought food to the Oxbow Market, including dips, beef sticks, popcorn, and pretzels. Folks were able to get samples and try new items from vendors. Well, I wanted to come out here. First of all, um, I love to support um, this small business. I'm out here at least once a week. Um, and. I wanted to bring my husband and do some taste testing on all of the little gourmet foods that they are uh, carrying and just to help support this local business. Chiefs fans got a 10% discount if they were sporting some team gear. 
Well, the running collective kicked off the Chiefs festivities this morning with the Chiefs group run. The purpose of the event is to get outside and lock some miles with other local runners. Participants were encouraged to bring a friend, human or otherwise, to help celebrate another Super Bowl appearance for the Chiefs. It's this great camaraderie amongst friends. We just go out and run and we'll run three or four miles today uh, with our pets <laughs> and just have a good time. It's, it's kind of like uh, sitting in a, in a restaurant or a bar setting, but no, no alcohol and just uh, good, good, healthy fun. The Running Collective hosts group runs every month. The Central Christian Center in Joplin today celebrated the Kansas City Chiefs in making it to the Super Bowl with a cereal bowl Sunday. Attendees were able to chow down on some of their favorite cereals, including Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms, and Fruit Loops. Officials say the event was a good way to help get kids excited for the big game. We wanted to do something fun. Um, kids, uh, they a lot of kids aren't super into Super Bowl and, and football. I myself am not a huge uh, football fan, although I do root for the Chiefs. And so um, we just wanted to have something fun to do because we know that they're going to be hyper because their parents are excited for the Super Bowl. And so what kid doesn't love a big bowl of cereal? A bracket created by the kids determined that the fan favorite cereal was Oreos. The significant increase in female viewership for the NFL is being credited to one pop star. Any guess who? Well, an impact that will be felt in this year's ads. Fox News national correspondent Brian Yenis has this story on the Taylor Swift effect. The NFL's female fan base accounts for 46% of its fans. And this year, football grew in popularity, especially among women and younger generations, partly due to the Taylor Swift effect. And Super Bowl advertisers want to capitalize on it. For this game, you really have to say, move over, guys. Taylor Swift is the MVP for the NFL this year, and that is really going to drive uh, major viewership. Data marketing company Zeta Global found Swift's love story with Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey drew more female viewership from two key advertising demographics, ages 8 to 17 and 17 to 34. You're going to see advertisers try to take advantage of that. Female-focused Super Bowl commercials are driving the action off the field, with women at the center of many of this year's spots. There's also an increase of health and beauty ads, potentially aimed at Swifties, including first-time Super Bowl advertiser Nix Cosmetics. Free game. Dove, which is returning to the big game for the first time since 2015, with a message of body positivity featuring young female athletes. And for the younger viewers, Nerd Candy, whose spot was inspired by a social media influencer, each hoping to grab the attention of the more than 100 million viewers and capitalize on the buzz around the ad before and after the big game. We're seeing a 5X people interested in looking up Super Bowl commercials. You know, that coupled with the Taylor Swift effect, I think is really exciting advertisers who want to get to that audience. Shelling out a reported $7 million for a 30-second spot, Zeta Global CEO David Steinberg says it's money well spent. To reach the number of people who are going to be viewing this game and the event itself, right? To have a Super Bowl ad in and of itself can be a defining moment for a company. Uh, it's worth the money. This year is predicted to be the most watched Super Bowl to date. Zeta Global Data shows the draw isn't only Taylor and Travis, but also Las Vegas hosting for the first time and the underdog story of 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy. In New York, Brian Yenis, Fox News. Later, more cheese products are being recalled for listeria contamination. We'll have the details. Snacks in the Super Bowl go hand in hand, but to help prevent you and your party guests from falling victim to food poisoning, Fox News' Gary Baumgarten shares what you need to keep in mind when preparing, serving, and eating tasty treats this evening. For many, Super Bowl Sunday also means supersized amounts of tasty treats, especially wings. The National Chicken Council estimates more than one billion will be eaten during Super Bowl weekend alone. 
But with football's biggest night lasting several hours, it's not uncommon for many people to leave their boxes of pizza, platters of subs, and bowls of dip out for the duration of the game. If it's cold, it's supposed to be hot. If it's hot, it's supposed to be cold. I would put that down. According to health experts, though, not storing your foods at correct temperatures could cause them to become breeding grounds for bacteria that can make you sick. The CDC says the most common symptoms of food poisoning include stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, fever, and more. Below 40, uh, most bacterial cells are not going to grow. They're not going to reproduce. Above 140, same thing. They're going to either be destroyed or not going to be able to reproduce. But you also have to be careful about bacteria when you're preparing foods. Cross-contamination. Hear about people who had raw chicken on the cutting board and then prepared a salad afterwards and it transferred to the salad. Meanwhile, nutrition experts are also throwing yellow flags when it comes to the dangers of double dipping. Double dipping a chip will spread the bacteria from the mouth to the dip and then potentially from that dip to another person. Gary Baumgarten, Fox News. Well, foods at your Super Bowl parties may contain a cheese products being recalled for listeria contamination. The USDA and the Food and Drug Administration say more than five dozen products sold under big brand names may have cheese with the listeria contamination. These cheese involved was made by the Rizzo Lopez Foods Company and recalls have been continually update, continuously updated since February 5th. Recalled products now include chicken burritos, enchiladas, chicken bowls, dips, salad kits, and taco kits. Locations include big retail chains like Albertsons, Trader Joe's, Costco, Safeway, Walmart, and many more. A new study warns pregnant women about fast food for a new reason. A University of Washington School of Medicine study says despite fast food risks itself for expectant mothers, pregnant women should avoid fast food because of chemical packaging issues. Packaging for french fries, hamburger buns and soft drinks may pose health risks to fetuses. Lindsay is next with a complete look at the forecast. And later, the SEK Humane Society hosts its 47th annual chili dinner. I know most of us are tuned into the Super Bowl, but we do have some winter weather conditions just ahead, and it could affect your travel home tonight. Taking a look outside at our downtown Joplin Cornell Complex camera, you start to see a little bit of flurries on the camera along with some fast winds, and uh, we do have a winter storm warning for our southeastern counties, Ottawa County to Lawrence County down to Benton County. So this whole area is going to be experiencing our heaviest band of snow tonight, along with some travel issues and your uh, morning commute could be affected by this because the heaviest band of snow coming in in the overnight hours into Monday morning. Now the rest of us are just having a win winter weather advisory and that's due to lighter snow, but still some accumulations and still could affect your travel and commute in the morning. Now we take a look, we're going to see this system at our widest view. It's pretty big and it's starting to rotate back in. The issue with this system is it has tracked from the south back to the north back to the south so our exact area of where the heavy span of snow has been has altered over the last few days. We're expecting to see it move through in our southern counties and you'll start to see it make its way in although everyone's getting a bit of the snow the southern and southeastern counties will be getting the heaviest band of snow. 2.30 in the morning, Monday, is when we start to see most of the snow move in. Temperatures don't drop below freezing, so that's just at the surface. It could maybe mean that it won't stick on the roads, but it still will stick and accumulate on the grass areas. Now, this is our heaviest band of snow through here with the uh, more rain and heavier snow just south of us. but. We are still seeing snow across the region and even in our northern counties, you guys aren't getting anything, maybe some rain. As we move through the morning hours on Monday, the snow starts to lighten up across the area and then it'll soon taper off to the east. As we make our way 830 on Monday, most of the snow's out of here. Temperatures still are not below freezing and then the heavy snow starts to move off going south of Springfield. Now, 
I want to take a look at the snow potential. It's a little wide because like I said, this has changed course quite a few times, but for our central counties up north, we're expecting just a dusting up to two inches with the lower central counties getting two to four inches of accumulations. And then that heaviest band of snow just clipping us in our southern counties about four to possibly six inches of snow. So this could be a severe winter system moving through especially for our southern counties. Now, it's going to warm up pretty quickly in the next few days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, getting back up to 61 degrees, just in time for another rain system next weekend. Hopefully the roads won't be too bad tonight and into the morning. Fingers crossed. All right, thanks, Lindsay. The Southeast Kansas Humane Society today held its 47th annual chili dinner. The purpose of the dinner is to help raise funds for various medications, vaccines, toys, and much more for the animals at the SEK Humane Society. It included a live performance of Bingo Bash and, of course, chili. So the core part of this event is our community, right? Because we get to work hand in hand with them. Everything's homemade for everybody to enjoy because without our community, that's our backbone. A lot of people don't understand that for our shelter, we do not get funding from the state, from the county, from the city. Uh, we don't. We donate every year to the Humane Society. We give them a little extra money. So, and the chili's fantastic. Today's event had more than 50 volunteers. Coming up, will you be calling out sick tomorrow? Millions of workers are expected to call out sick the day after the Super Bowl. I'm Jeff Paul in Los Angeles with how many Americans think Monday should be a national holiday. Older workers make up a significant chunk of the workforce, but some say they feel pushed to the sidelines because of discrimination. A Pew Research Center study says that while one in five Americans over 65 were employed last year, many say they are experiencing age discrimination in their jobs. Research from the American Association of Retired Persons says two in three adults over 50 think they're facing age discrimination, and 90% of them say that discrimination is common. Well, millions of Americans plan to be sidelined tomorrow, taking out the day after the Super Bowl, whether they told their boss or not. The widespread call out reigniting the age old debate. Should Super Bowl Monday be a national holiday? Fox News correspondent Jeff Paul has this story. Super Bowl 58 is predicted to be the most watched championship to date, with the National Retail Federation estimating as many as 200 million people will tune in to see the Kansas City Chiefs face the San Francisco 49ers. The majority of people will be watching on TV, maybe having a drink or two with those wings and hanging out with their friends well into the night. But before the alarm goes off Monday morning, millions have already decided to ditch work. But over 16 million people are planning to skip work the day after the Super Bowl. Roughly 10 million of those already requested the day off. And according to research from the Workforce Institute at UKG, about 6 million plan to fake sick or ghost their employer that day. The Super Bowl is a it's a national cultural phenomenon. It's a big day, a long day of, of celebrations and parties and time with family and friends and neighbors. And people are tired on Monday and, and they treat it like any other holiday. And, and millions of employees are looking for a day off. Cases of the Super Bowl flu, along with those who show up after a night of excessive celebrations, can cost businesses some $6 billion. Chris Todd, UKG's CEO, says this is a good opportunity for managers and companies to be open to discussing time off ahead of the game. This is an easy conversation that managers should start a couple weeks before the big game and should give employees the room to tell them whether they want to take the day off or not. The widespread work outages also spark the age old debate. Should the Monday after the big game be a national holiday? No one needs a national holiday for this. I definitely think it should be a national holiday. UKG's data shows only about a third of Americans are in favor. 37% of our respondents say that it should be a national holiday. Given our data about the number of employees who plan on taking the day off, whether it's an official national holiday or not, employers should for sure treat it as such. And plan accordingly. More than 14 million employees admit to the Super Bowl sick out even when they weren't really sick. In Los Angeles, Jeff Paul, Fox News. Up next, Team Fluff and Team Ruff face off in this year's Puppy Bowl.
Well, today, Team Fluff and Team Raw faced off in this year's Puppy Bowl. And of course, Travis Clossy and Taylor Snift were in attendance. It was an exciting matchup, but Team Ruff ended up coming out on a top with a final score of 72-69. 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports coming your way. GOP presidential candidates reacting to the report on President Joe Biden's classified documents coming up. This week's special counsel report on President Joe Biden's classified documents probe is now being used by his rivals on the campaign trail. Former President Donald Trump and candidate Nikki Haley both using it as a way to attack the president. Fox News correspondent Madeline Rivera has the story. Former President Trump not holding back. He says the 40 criminal counts against him in his classified documents case should be dropped because special counsel Robert Hurd didn't charge President Biden. We have a sick and corrupt two-tiered system of justice in our country. Do I know better than anybody? Hurd says there are differences between how the two leaders responded to their probes with Trump allegedly refusing to turn in materials and enlisting others to destroy evidence. Trump also argues he was able to retain his documents under the Presidential Records Act. The statute, though, applies to vice presidential records as well. The report taking center stage on the campaign trail with exactly two weeks to go before the South Carolina primary. Haley preparing for a showdown with her former boss in her home state after Trump swept Nevada's GOP presidential caucus Thursday. She's seizing the report as an opportunity to not only slam President Biden's mental capacities, but former President Trump's too. The fact that we're dealing with someone where a special counsel said that their memory was failing, that they are diminished, it's bigger than just Joe Biden. You can look at the same thing, whether it was Donald Trump getting me confused with Nancy Pelosi. Trump and Haley are on the stump in the Palmetto State today. This is Trump's first time back in South Carolina in two months. And Haley's campaign is trolling him by sending a roving billboard truck near his event in Conway. It features a video with clips of Trump and Biden in an attempt to drive home their message that a rematch between, quote, two grumpy old men is something most Americans don't want. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Well, it's been a working weekend for the Senate as lawmakers hammer out a foreign aid bill that carries a price tag of more than $95 billion. The legislation includes funding for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. This afternoon, the Senate broke a filibuster on the package by a vote of 67 to 27, surpassing the 60 votes that were needed. This essentially guarantees passage of the bill in the coming days. President Biden took the controversial step of suspending all exports of U.S. liquefied natural gas, or LNG. Progressives and climate activists hailed the move, but bipartisan lawmakers viewed this as a political maneuver before the election. Fox News senior congressional correspondent Chad Pergram has more. The administration hearing criticism in stereo from Republicans. This decision defies common sense any way you measure it and from Democrats. Again and again, the White House has shown that it is so concerned with indulging radical climate activists that it's willing to play politics with our energy security and that of our allies. West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin is often at odds with the president on energy policy. That's why he called the hearing. Lawmakers claim the export pause was a political ploy ahead of the election. I guess they take all their advice and recommendations from a 25-year-old a climate activist who is on TikTok. Other nations depend more on American natural gas following the war in Ukraine. And so if the United States doesn't provide it, the Qataris, the Iranians, and the Russians will probably provide it. We have to get it from somewhere. But a top administration energy official says Europe shouldn't worry. And I want to say this very clearly, it will not impact our ability to supply our allies with LNG. However, Watson argued otherwise at the hearing. There is no uh, European government that has welcomed uh, this decision. The European Parliament has not welcomed this decision, nor has the European Council. Senators suggested the administration tried to hide the LNG export halt. There was no Federal Register notice. Just all of a sudden, one Friday, it's always on a Friday, Friday afternoon, January 26, we hear that there is this pause. A suspension of LNG exports could introduce volatility into the market. That could make it more expensive for people to heat their homes. On Capitol Hill, Chad Pergram, Fox News. Still ahead, TikTok and the music industry face off. 
TikTok is a lot quieter these days after the world's largest music company pulled its songs off the app. I'm Rebecca Castor in Washington with details on this music rights face-off coming up. With the Super Bowl going into overtime, it could be a later night for everybody, which could cause some issues seeing as we do have a winter storm coming in. Taking a look at our downtown Joplin Cornell Complex camera, we're starting to see a few flurries land on the camera and the winds are picking up as we do have a winter storm warning for our southeastern counties. This is going to be due to the uh, heavy snow that we could be expecting to see in the early hours on Monday, the high accumulations four to six inches and some dangerous driving conditions. The rest of us are just having a winter weather advisory in the southern or the central counties down to the south. And this is a little less severe as we're only seeing two to maybe four inches and less of a dangerous driving conditions, although it could still be pretty dangerous in your morning Monday commute. Taking a look at the system, we're starting to see it kind of rotate back in, and then as it does, it's gonna make its way into our area. Now, it's shifted a lot in the last few days. At first, it was a little more of a southerly track, then it started shifting north and shifting back south again. So it's been a little all over the place, but as it's making its way into our area, we kind of have nailed down an exact route of where we're gonna see the heaviest snowfall. Now, most of us are gonna get snow for our central eastern counties down. We're all gonna get snow. However, the heaviest snowfall band is going to be just clipping our southern counties right through here going through West Plains as we make our way into the early Monday morning hours. Now you can see the tip of the northern counties is not getting any rain, no snow, just some clouds and then goes to rain, then to snow again. Now it's gonna lighten up as we move into the Monday morning round time, you're about to start getting up going to work. It's gonna be lighter as you see our heaviest band of snow still right through here and then Joplin and up north, it's going to be a light flurries, maybe mixing back with some rain before it starts to die out and go off to the east. And then it'll take its way through West Plains and they'll be dealing with the heavy snow. Now we could see some pretty heavy snowfall amounts in our southern counties. Down by Bentonville, possibly up to four inches, maybe more, depending on how long this system decides to stay over that area. Now, in our central eastern counties, right through here, we're gonna be getting two to four inches of accumulations. Now, none of these temperatures are below freezing, so we may not see it hit on the roads, but it will accumulate on the grass areas. And then, up in Nevada, Pittsburgh area, that's only gonna see a dusting, maybe up to two inches, not as much as our southern counties. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the sun comes back out, temperatures warm back up just in time for another rain system coming in next weekend. Well, hopefully everyone gets home safe. I know this Super Bowl is being pushed back a little bit, yes. but if we can make it through, we're going to be rewarded with some pretty nice days ahead of us. Yes, we will. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Coming up in sports, the Chiefs and the 49ers bring Super Bowl 58 into overtime. Plus, the Thunder return home to play the Kings. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Hey, welcome into sports. I'm John Dales. It's Super Bowl Sunday and the Chiefs and 49ers have given us a classic. So much so that four quarters, not enough. Super Bowl 58 in overtime when the two were tied at 19. Unfortunately, we can't show you the highlights of the game right now due to NFL copyright rules. The game broadcast still going, but we certainly can't explain how crazy of a game this has been. The Chiefs entered the fourth quarter with a 13-10 lead. Jawan Jennings scored a touchdown to put the Niners in front, 16-13, a blocked extra point, and three made field goals later. The game goes in to overtime. By the way, one of those field goals, 57 yards by Harrison Butker, that's a Super Bowl record. It shatters the previous mark of 55 yards, made earlier in this game by San Francisco kicker Jake Moody. Well, the Niners get the ball first in overtime. They go right down the field, kick a field goal, 
Kansas City still has another chance, gets it back, and a touchdown would win it. As we come on the air right now, Mahomes and company are driving. Well, the Super Bowl is not the only game being played today. Earlier this afternoon, the Thunder returned to Paycom Center in Oklahoma City to host the Kings. The Thunder at home facing the Kings, trying to snap a two-game losing skid. Shea Gilgis-Alexander with a fast start. Gets the steal and the slam, then finishes through the teeth of the defense with the reverse layup defenders all around him. In the second quarter, it's a nine-point Oklahoma City lead, and Chet Holmgren, check this out. He spikes back home the putback dunk. Lead stretches to double digits. We go ahead to the third. SGA gets the block here. Fast break going the other way, and he's going to finish off the break that he started himself. Shagel just Alexander finishes the game with 38 points. Just for good measure here, Jalen Williams finds Chet Holmgren on the alley-oop slam. Williams had 32 points and nine assists. Thunder stopped the losing skid. They beat Sacramento 127 to 113. Elsewhere, the final round of the Waste Management Phoenix Open is underway at TPC Scottsdale. Scotty Scheffler on hole 16 on a par three, tees off and lands this approach inches from the hole. He would par that hole and end the day taking third place. Now Nick Taylor and Charlie Hoffman were battling out for the top two spots though and on hole six, par four, Hoffman knocks that one in for birdie. He leads. Now in par four, Nick Taylor, his second stroke, right near the hole. That one's going to land close, just a few feet away. He would birdie that one. We go ahead to the ninth hole after that. This is a par four. Taylor rolls in for a birdie. Now he has a share of the lead. To the 13th hole, it's a par five. Hoffman with an eagle. For the lead right there, he would enter the clubhouse 21 under in front. Now to the 18th hole, Taylor puts his second shot right onto the green and he would need to make this next putt to go and force a playoff between he and Hoffman. So if he misses this, it's over, but nails it. We're going to a playoff between the two of them. Playoffs would be a theme today across the sports world. Both of them tied at 21 under. Second playoff hole, Taylor with a chance to win it here, and he buries it. Putt is in for birdie, and Nick Taylor wins the Waste Management Phoenix Open. And coincidentally, the Chiefs also win the Super Bowl yeah. in the middle of our sports block. How about that? I, it, was a, it was a slow <laughs> game, and I'm so surprised by how exciting this game turned out to be. I know, yeah, slow all game long, and then I feel like it kind of picked up near the fourth quarter, and then overtime, one of the longest overtimes that we've seen yeah. in playoff football in a long time. But wow, how about that? Another Super Bowl ring for Pat Mahomes, Andy Reid, and company. And I think it's the first time in, what, 20 years that there's a back-to-back -back yes. Super Bowl championship. Yeah, I believe first time since 2003. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> never, never doubt Patrick Mahomes and the you, Chiefs. You really can't, you, no. All right, we'll be right back. For all the TikTok users out there, you might have noticed the app is a lot quieter these days. That's because music from some of the industry's top artists have been pulled from the app in a huge dispute over their work being stolen. Fox News correspondent Rebecca Castor reports. Your TV volume isn't muted. This is just what TikTok sounds like after Universal Music Group pulled its artist songs off the platform meaning mega stars like Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, and Drake are now silent. Up until now, folks haven't you, you had the courage to do it, be, especially on a, on a platform as large as TikTok, because artists use it all the time. It boils down to a contract dispute between the record label and social media app. UMG wants TikTok to pay artists more for using their songs and protect them from the harmful effects of AI. What we are concerned about is uh, where the large language models are using copyrighted material to spit out new music and where folks are mimicking image, personality, voice of, you know, high level icons. It happened to a recent Grammy winner, Lainey Wilson, when an AI generated photo of her likeness was used to promote weight loss gummies. She took her story to lawmakers as Congress attempts to regulate the technology. 
I do not have to tell you how much of a gut punch it is to have your name, your likeness, or your voice ripped from you and used in ways that you could never imagine. TikTok says it protects the misuse of artists' songs on its app and accuses UMG from walking away from a, quote, free promotional and discovery vehicle for their talent. Something industry critics say will hurt smaller artists the most. It's now a showdown to see which company, if either, caves first. TikTok relies on music for its most popular videos, yet record labels rely on TikTok to promote their artists' work. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Who's topping this Super Bowl weekend's box office? We'll take a look up next. It's the slowest Super Bowl weekend ever at the box office, but some people did go to the movies. David Daniel has early estimates for the top five films in theaters. Read the small print and there does seem to be a lot of them. Oh. Wonka is at $205 million domestic oh. after a fifth place weekend oh. worth $3.1 million. $3.2 million put the first three episodes of season four of The Chosen, a special theatrical event, in fourth place. Jason Statham and The Beekeeper stayed in third on ticket sales of three and a half million dollars. Are guys so simple that you just have to put on a pirate skeezer dress and suddenly they want to talk to you? The horror rom-com Lisa Frankenstein opened in second oh, place with a disappointing $3.8 million. I'm in some really big trouble, Mom. <laughs> Argyle kept the crown but fell 63% from its dismal debut, grossing $6.5 million for a 10-day domestic total of just $28.8 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll leave you with a video of Chiefs fans celebrating the Super Bowl all across our area. From all of us here in the studio, have a great night.